Milan transport drivers in Italy, taking men and supplies forward for the important push across the Sangro River, often feel at home. For much of the scenery they pass through might be somewhere in the South Island. The bridges today are new military ones to replace demolitions. Here and there, ancient hilltop fortress towns remain, stone-built European counterparts of the hilltop paths of the Maoris. The transport drivers need the new bridges, and the local Italians rebuilding their country need them too. Castro Frentano, 58 kilometers, but the German lines along the Sangro River bar the way. There's hard fighting ahead before this road can be followed through to Castro Frentano. The enemy is on the move though, and an ammunition convoy is taking shells to the guns so that he won't move in comfort. must find the enemy's road. Already the Nazis are burning villages behind the retreat to their line. Soon the whole battery will open up on them. The guns go on firing. The road traffic rolls on. Here is the lucky hill town of Casoli. Lucky because the retreating Nazis merely sacked it and blew up a few important buildings. And the first United Nations forces to enter find the town still standing and not on fire. The townsmen wonder about this new army that's coming in. They know all too much about the army that's just left. The mayor puts a good face on it and offers some wine which the Nazis didn't find to these strangers in armored cars, men of the New Zealand Divisional Cavalry. Then everyone cheers up as all at once it becomes believable that for Casoli the war is over. From the walls the war can still be seen. Heavy equipment has been moved up for the final assault on the German winter line. And now the guns are shelling beyond it. returning refugees are crossing the Sangro itself. This river was a selective barrier. In the Battle of the Sangro, as soon as the floods subsided, the infantry could cross, but General Freiburg's tanks and guns had to wait for new bridges. New Zealand engineers built this and other crossings under shell fire during the night of the main battle and through the following day. Now heavy trucks cross the river without difficulty, though much of this area is thick in mud. Further forward, mopping up operations are in progress against the fighting enemy, whilst the transport men fight their own battle with General Mud, using wheel chains, and when they fail, the ever-persuasive bulldozer. That's one hidden machine gun post the less. This is the fortress of Castro Fentano, overwhelmed by our infantry and daylight. While they clean up this former heart of the winter line, everything they need is following them up along the roads. Here's mail and bread. It's a motor truck's war. With the fall of Castro Fentano and the German winter line, one critical stage of the war inside Italy came to an end. The infantry who did the job can relax for a few minutes and the gunners who followed over the bridges to give them support can also feel satisfied with a job well done.